Good morning. We request all guests to please be seated. At this moment, it would be best if you please uh, close the ringers of your phone. Also, this is a private event held by the Old Spring Delian Association, not meant for any media. So you're requested not to take film or photographs of the event. We have an official photographer, and the complete program is being videographed also, which can be shared with you later. We request you to please keep your mobiles on switch off mode or off, ringer off. There is, of course, the condolence book outside, the remembrance book. Some of you have written on it. The others can write while you're on your way out. The floral tributes have been paid to ma'am already. If there are any other who would like to do so, can do in the end. Good morning again. As I look around, my eyes are searching for her. The wave of her hand, the twinkle in her eye, the smile on her lips, turning to a soft laughter, and the open arms, always ready with the warmest hug. I look for my teacher, my mentor, my friend, but even though I cannot see her, I feel her presence, as I'm sure each one of us here does today. We are so privileged and exceptional for Dr. Rajni Kumar touched our lives and will remain with us till our last breath. I request you to please stand up to pay homage and keep a two minute silence. You can either put on the gif of the candle you uploaded outside or just put the flashlights on your phone. We want to send the light to ma'am with love from all of us here. Thank you. Dr. Jyoti Bose was the luckiest Springdalian, being her daughter, her student, her companion, her best friend, and in later years, even mothering her. Dr. Bose was indeed ma'am's pride, keeper of good faith, sometime nursing her, and at others sharing and learning from her. Dr. Jyoti Bose. Uh, 
Uh, good morning to all of you. I'm sorry I have not prepared anything today, because I thought that uh, it's time that we hear all of you as people related in some way to the memory of Rajni Kumar. I stand here as a daughter and as her student, of course, as her, let's say, what shall I say? I have no words to say what I was in the sense of a learner, continuous learner in the journey of Springdale's. So I'll start with what, firstly, it's a pleasure to see Shantanu and Akriti from Mumbai and all those who have made this journey possible here. It was long overdue the OSA to meet, but with the sad demise of Dilpreet and the COVID, sort of OSA for a while was, you know, it, it didn't exist because I was at home really nursing Mrs. Kumar. I was not on the ball. I've started coming to school now. And a lot of things will take place. OSA will take off the ground very soon. But for the intergenerations who are here, so many generations, I can see the third generations even. To think that she meant something to all of us. I see Vineet Seth, my classmate, who always beat me at number one and I was two. I see you there, Vineet. So, basically, I want to begin with, well, I just thought of it in the car. And Francis Lai and Andy Williams wrote this lyric in 1970. And in 71, it became a famous movie. So it starts with the line, the song, and you all know it. Where do I begin to tell the story that is older than the sea? The sweet love story of the love she brings to me. Where do I start? And that's where all of us are at this crux of where do we start? We know it can't end, but where do we start? There are so many facets to this remarkable person who at the age of 23 comes as an English girl in this town of Kushyarpur and is transformed into an Indian. So the journey is full of complexities, the love of the Indian people. She never wanted to go back. Even six years ago or seven years ago when she did go back, she said, I don't really want to go there. The people, I don't like the people. They're so cold, she used to say. I don't want to go to England. What's, what's in England, she said. What's there for me? This is, you know, this is the place she wanted. And she didn't go two times. She just about got to Dubai, but didn't want to go to England. It left her cold. She said, everybody is going about their own ways. Nobody has a, literally a family. And that's what disturbed her. And here she came. She made this family. Families and families. Family of Spring Dalians. Families of so many. The lives of people. The families of teachers became her families. The family of uh, grandmas in Todapur became her family. You, you don't even know how many became her family. And I think she was sustained by the love of the Indian people. She never felt she was not an Indian. Yesterday, the British High Commissioner had written to me because I had to inform her, him, of her demise. I have to inform if a British citizen is no longer living. And he said, he said, what a long life she spent in India. And this is to inform you that you will bring her passport for cancellation as it's still valid. It was valid till 2025. So each time she went to the foreign registration office, FRRO, they said, she came in the wheelchair the last two times and they said, you're still there, ma'am. 
अभी भी हैं वो शीस ही वुड आस मी एट द काउंटर आई सेड वो अभी भी हैं हाँ जी ठीक है एक ईयर से एक्सटेंशन शी वुड गेट एन एक्सटेंशन एवरी ईयर एंड नाउ दैट इट हैपन आई इन्फॉर्म द एफ आर आर ओ बट दे हैव रिटन बैक सो जस्ट टू से दैट हर लाइफ वॉज टाइमलेस एंड यू नो वी टुक अ फॉर ग्रांटेड वी थॉट शी वुड लास्ट फॉर एवर एंड शी लिव द वंडरफुल लाइफ we should not only remember her but also celebrate it because she certain she said i've done everything that i ever wanted and i sleep in 2 minutes why because i have done everything i wanted to and i've written there a life without regret i think it's here isn't it no i think i gave that poem uh, uh, in the in the memorial that um that hers was a life without any regrets and that is something that all of us have to learn how can life be without regrets she said i've done everything i want to so i sleep happy i sleep like a baby in 2 minutes i'm asleep she said if i'm fed i'm full and i sleep but the regret was in the last maybe year or so she couldn't eat much and things that she loved she couldn't eat and that is exactly it's an antithesis of the whole thing that what really got her in the end was a disease where she couldn't eat and she passed away of cancer of the gullet so she couldn't ingest anything it's but she took it in her stride she understood it it's a silent game you know when you're ill like this we don't tell her she doesn't tell us but we all know and she said it she would listen carefully to the music then fall asleep halfway she didn't want she had tubes so she couldn't eat anyway but that didn't she took it all in her stride a marvelous patient she didn't want to speak she knew she knew it you know when life is ebbing out of you you probably know it as with many of us who have been ill she only wanted to know that her community and her osa was i mean her life was osa and i think today's memorial will indeed be the best way to remember her and celebrate her life thank you thank you ma'am Merrily 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 life is but a dream is a presentation depicting ma'am and her life through the years
Ma'am always said that her greatest strength lay in her teachers, her students, and the parent body. So many teachers had the privilege to work with her and learn from her. Among those, her very favorite, Mrs. S. Kanwar, who retired as principal Springdale School, Pusa Road, is, he is here to share her thoughts with us. Ma'am, please. Dear students, and Mrs. Bose and family, it was 53 years ago in January 69 as a young woman that I met Mrs. Kumar for the first time. Half a century later, I stand in front of you as an old woman looking warm back at the warm and precious memories I hold so dear with Mrs. Kumar. To begin with, Mrs. Kumar was a true icon to all and a personal mentor to me. While it is hard to find words to define and remember Mrs. Kumar, there is no doubt in mind that one most prominent image that I have for her is an inspiring teacher, not a classroom teacher, but who inspired generations of families to benefit from small education experiment that Mr. and Mrs. Kumar started in 1955. Mrs. Kumar took my family, like many families in, and found great friendship and companionship with me, my husband, my two daughters, and especially my grandson who she always remembered to ask about in any conversation we ever had. I want to share a few instances with Mrs. Kumar that I represent her loving personality, her strength and confidence, as well as her unwavering support for me throughout my career and life. When I first walked to Springdale's, Mrs. Kumar brought all young, unknown and fresh teachers together and said, word for word, watch how I walk. I want you to learn to walk like this. Hold yourself up and be confident. And nervously, I asked her to give me a chance and that she wouldn't be disappointed. That was the first instance of our relationship and eventually our lifelong partnership. In times of trouble, when I went through surgeries and my late husband was in the hospital, Mrs. Kumar found one way or another to get to my house and spend time with us. Once when my husband had heart surgery and I was in the waiting room, waiting for this, uh, just uh, some information about the success of the surgery, to my surprise, Mrs. Kumar came out of the restricted area in the hospital that was escorts. She told me that she has visited my husband, talked to the doctors, and had a full readout of the successful surgery. Before I could ask how she had managed to get past security, the locked doors and the doctors. It was this kind of deep care that was there. It was only a few months back that we spoke on phone, probably the last one. And we, as usually did, talk about nostalgic old days at Spusa Road. I joked with her and we were all waiting to celebrate for her 100th birthday, to which she responded that 99 and a half and 100 are pretty much the same. Then she paused. She said, Shashi, I forget that you once taught me that 
and 40% are not the same. As, as I had always refused to round up examination numbers, which she didn't like particularly. I remembered the name of the student who she and I had discussed about this discrepancy also, but it took her less than half a second to name the boy. I won't disclose it here. <laughs> we had a good laugh, the two old friends, we shared this. It was my great honor to have Mrs. Kumar as a dear friend, and to my great humility to have witnessed her in action over these last five decades, bringing joy to all around her. I want to end my note today with the words that one of her favorite songs that she sang at the end of the program, Kyu Sara Sara. While we miss Mrs. Kumar deeply, she is not physically here to join us in future that lies ahead of us. She will always reside in the millions of hearts of our students across the city, the country, and the world. Her life's work her dedication to education, her spirited friendship will always live in my heart forever. Mrs. Bose, those we love dearly don't go away. They are always in our prayers. A beautiful soul has found, or rather entered, the eternal nest, an angel in heaven, no more physical pains, who will be living in our memories for all times to come. Om Shanti. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Anita Luthra, who retired as academic supervisor, is a teacher whom ma'am appreciated for her immaculate work, way of working, her poise, and her commitment. Mrs. Luthra is here to share her memories with us, ma'am. Good morning, Mrs. Bose. Members of OSA, ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply honored to be present here this morning and pay tribute to Mrs. Rajni Kumar, a visionary and an educationist much ahead of her time and who changed the very meaning of education for me. Though Mrs. Kumar loved to sing, as Mrs. Kanwar said, K Sara Sara, Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. K sara sara. But I firmly believe that she could see the future clearly. Otherwise, how in 1950s she could visualize Springdale's as it stands tall today. She envisioned a school like no other school, a child-centric school with heterogeneous classrooms, and happy children. A school where the morning assembly songs celebrate peace, brotherhood, harmony, and diversity. It was so beautiful hearing the students, the OSA, practicing these very songs this morning. Where the names of the eight houses are not after any freedom fighters or leaders, but after values which are so required in the world today, where dignity of labor was learned in the cleaning period. And this school that you attended as students has taught me everything that I know about learning. To a teacher like me, Mrs. Kumar Springdale's is a master class, an experience that no B.Ed. college can provide. I learned that education is much more than 
giving a lecture, take a test from the students. You should be able to sensitize the students to community needs. And she said you can do that only if you go to a community and see what's happening. We had some misgivings. I said, I've come to teach biology. Why should I go to the community? She says, how are you going to tell your children about community needs if you don't go there? Teaching is not everything. You have to be a counselor sometime. So for that, you have to develop empathy. And most important, you have to be up on your general awareness. You never know which dignitary would come to Springdale's any time. In the 80s, it was always the African National Congress people coming to school. And Mrs. Kumar had these career guidance programs where she would invite a lot of eminent people. So on one of those, she invited the architect of Pusa Road, Mr. Jhabwala. And uh, she happened to see me in the corridor and she said, you know, I've left his wife in my office and it's rather cold. It was December. Uh, could you just look after her, give her a cup of tea? I said, sure. So I went in and there was this tiny lady sitting in her office. And uh, she said, I'm Ruth Chabwala. Thank God for my awareness. Ruth Chabwala, I said, the merchant ivory Ruth Chabwala. She said, yes. That was how Mrs. Kumar was. No airs about inviting big dignitaries or saying that I've invited so-and-so to the school. That was how she was, cool. Mrs. Kumar encouraged the teachers to have fun and enjoy also. The school birthdays, the teacher's day, and the interactive weekends at Chhatarpur and the Masuri holiday home. Those were the times when we enjoyed ourselves. But along with this, there was our in-service training taken care of by those innovatively framed teacher seminars, which she so painstakingly worked over. Mrs. Kumar had this uncanny ability to unearth talent and bring out the best in everyone. With me, it was comparing the school functions. And after every function, I would look at her for approval and she would have an encouraging word or she would smile and wink in appreciation. Today, Mrs. Kumar, as I pay my tribute, I seek your approval yet again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We in the OSA always involve our teachers. When we made it into an old Springdalian association, ma'am said, what about the teachers? Should they also have an old teachers association? We said no, they will be a part of the old Springdalian Association. And we are so blessed and so glad that so many teachers have come today. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, as a part of the OSA uh, structure, we also have uh, both the principals of the school as executive chairpersons of the OSA. Mrs. Mala Gupta, Principal Pusa Road, welcome, you, welcome to the executive body of the OSA and Mrs. Ritu Madan in absentia. They're going, going to be a part of the Old Springdale Association. Thank you. Thank you for the music, the songs I'm singing. Thanks for all the joy they're bringing. Who can live without it, without a song or a dance? What are we? So I say, thank you for the music, for giving it to me. So sang Abba and so apt for the OSA choir, consisting of 20 young and old Springdalians from batches 1981 to 2020. They present their songs.
Lieutenant General Arvind Mahajan is from the first batch of Springdales. He, along with our President Emeritus, Mr. Niranjan Ajwani, and Mrs. Shalini Sikka, who sadly are no longer with us, were among Ma'am's favorite. As General Mahajan comes up today to speak and share his thoughts, let me share that he met his batchmate today, Dr. Pavan Sethi, after 55 years. So nice to see you together. Please, General Mahajan. My address is a tribute to Auntie Kumar, a timeless legacy. Dear Dr. Jyoti Bose, Director of Springdale Schools, Mrs. Mala Gupta, Mrs. Kanwar, teachers, OSA, trustees and alumni, and my dear friends. We have assembled this morning for an occasion no one wished would ever occur to commemorate the life and times of our revered Auntie Kumar, who has been a beacon of light, of guidance, and inspiration for a generation of Springdaleans. With Auntie Kumar's passing, an era indeed has come to an end. Hers was a lifetime of service, a life of love and daring of high values. She leaves behind a legacy no one can emulate. I've had the unique fortune to be a special beneficiary of Auntie Kumar's immense kindness and sage advice. Her benevolence and support were cardinal, timely, and extended from time to time. I was a student, and through various stages of my life, army, a life as an army officer. To recall some of these occasions, when I had been selected for the National Defense Academy, I was faced with the predicament whether to join or not. It was Auntie Kumar's candid advice and encouragement that helped me 
decide to join. Which is why I stand before you as one who donned the army uniform with pride. It was a time of grave calamity in 1999 when posted as a brigadier at Srinagar at times of the Kargil War. There was an obvious threat to my life due to frequent visits to the battle zone. It was at this time that Auntie Kumar prodded me to go forth and do my duties to the nation, reassuring my family of her being there in constant support. Auntie Kumar did me a singular honor of being present at the EME mess. At the time, I was appointed as the Director General Corps of EME. When asked, she proudly said, she was here as my mother, representing my own mother who was unable to attend. She was also my special guest at Rashtrapati Bhavan on the occasion when I was awarded the Param Vishis Seva Medal by the then President of India, His Excellency Dr. APJ Kalam. Interesting on that occasion, one Dr. Kalam, who knew Auntie very well, expressed her pleasant surprise on seeing her at this ceremony. Auntie Kumar mentioned to him that she was attending with pride as it was one of her pupils who was receiving the award from Dr. Kalam then went on to say, then I quote, your people, your people, you must be the happiest person today. That was Auntie Kumar. Auntie Kumar's legacy is varied and rich. She was a recipient of Padma Shri and several international awards for changing the face of school education and infusing ethics and morals at the core of the education system. She had along with her other wonderful qualities, a warm and welcoming style with an inclusive approach. She was a keen tennis fan and we had the privilege to watch the Davis Cup matches together on several occasions. It was with a childlike glee that we looked forward to attending Auntie Kumar's Christmas Day and birthday celebration, enjoying a slice of the excellent specially baked rum cake, always with a lucky coin, which was a blessing and charm for me always, and I've kept them with me. The distinguished award, the first distinguished award which he gave to me on my retirement, I still have it with pride. If today we as a community of Springdaleans stand tall, we do so on the shoulders of this grand lady who touched our lives. I join everyone present here in her praise for her family, as indeed the entire Springdale's family to be blessed with strength and resolve to bear this humongous and very tragic loss. At the end, a salute to grand old lady, Dr. Rajni Kumar, a timeless legacy. A salute Dr. Jyoti Bose and the OSA uh, trustees and the alumni. God bless you. Stay young, stay with pride, and be a good Springdalian. God bless you all. Jai Hind. Ma'am was so happy to meet Springdalians from across the globe. Her visits and connection with them was an integral part of her daily routine. The emails and cards she received filled her with joy and pride. We present to you messages from Springdalians who say, we carried the lessons of life you taught us across the globe. Hello, I'm Samia Swaminathan from the 1975 batch of Springdale School. While I'm just as sad as everyone else is that we've lost our dear Mrs. Kumar, I remember her with her twinkling eyes and her lovely smile. When I last spoke to her, told her that I was looking forward to her 100th birthday and that I would make sure that I come to celebrate it with her. 
She laughed her usual bubbly laugh and, and blessed me. She's shaped generations of students. And if any of us have accomplished, and many of us, many of our students have done extremely well in life, it's because of the, the culture and the spirit, the compassion, the humanity, the exposure to the world beyond what we knew as students in those days, the friendships and strong bonds we formed, the sense of social responsibility that she inculcated in us, that the school inculcated in us, made us what we are today. And that's a legacy that very few people can aspire to. So I think we have to be really proud of what she achieved, the amazing person she was, inspiration to so many. We celebrate her life today. We pray that her soul rest in peace. But the best thing we can do is to pass that legacy on to the next generation. I'm extremely fortunate that Auntie Kumar impacted the lives of three generations of my family for the past 50 years, and I never lost touch with her. I was blessed to be associated with Auntie, first as a student, then as a teacher for over two decades, and as a parent of a Springdalian. Auntie imparted many important lessons, which have stuck with me. I learned from Auntie to be brave when the chips are down. When big tragedy struck me early in my life, she stood by me like a rock support. She has always been my role model, someone who had withstood many storms and conquered them with courage. She exuberated compassion and visited me at my home in Delhi and even in Singapore to inquire about me. I learned the impact of such kind acts. I learned how a simple gesture of remembering people's names and replying to letters promptly can make a huge difference. Despite having an extremely busy life, Auntie replied to every letter my dad wrote to her. She remembered names of several of her students, even after years, which showed her warmth and how she truly cared about them. And that's what I try to do as a teacher. Auntie Kumar will forever remain in my heart as my godmother, guiding me through life. She was definitely God's most unique creation, of which I'm sure even God is very proud of. Let us celebrate her life today. I have no doubt in my mind that Mrs. Rajni Kumar, my principal, my children's padadi, and my mother's mentor, has been the most influential person in my life. She personified the qualities of goodness, joy, discipline, compassion, empathy, and wisdom that seldom come together in one being. From the countless conversations we had, I learned and imbibed the lessons of life that are timeless, essential, pertinent, and true. Julian and Andrea, my children, treasure each moment spent with their Padadi and pestered her constantly to hear the incredible stories of wartime England and her romance with Yudhishthira Kumar. Her memory will remain as vivid in our hearts as the songs she sung for us at the dinner table. We will always love you, Padadi. Love you forever in our hearts. There is a time to remember someone who made all the difference in your life. And that is today as we remember Rajni Kumar, principal of Springdale School, somebody I had the privilege of studying with for less than really two years of my life, the last two years of my life in school. Mrs. Kumar, as she was known to all of us, was somebody who changed so much about the ways in which we decided to live the rest of our lives. I was already a feminist, I was already committed to making the world a better place, but it was not until I met Mrs. Kumar that I understood that you could do all of that and do that with so much joy and such a sense of um, wonder at all that the world had to offer. We miss you, Mrs. Kumar, and you will always live on in our memories. 
Through much of school, Mrs. Kumar was this amazing, inspirational, slightly intimidating figure. I got to know her much better personally towards the end of my school years and in the decades since, whenever I used to stop by to chat with her about so many things. And I realized that she is an even more remarkable person than I fully appreciated. She encouraged me to write poems and I wrote this little rhyme for her. We came to learn about arithmetic and dates and places so historic, but also of our world, the family, our distant brothers, not yet free. Along the way, ma'am, you changed us all, because spoken or unspoken, it was your call. My dear, what matters the most to me, did we mold the best human you could be? I miss you so much, ma'am. But rest assured, our best tribute to Springdalians is that we are going to keep making the world a better place. I'm Sandeep Agarwal and I graduated from Pusa in 1983. We all call her lovingly as ma'am, auntie, nani. The love we have for ma'am and the institution she built and nurtured called Springdales is endless. 75 ex Springdalians from over 55 different batches got together in New York City in the summer of 2015. One thing we all agreed, though we left Springdales and India many decades ago, but Springdales and Ma'am Kumar never left from our heartbeats. Ma'am is such an inspiration that 37 years after graduating, I still feel a strong bond with her and I'm proud to be a Springdalian. Ma'am, aapne unginat sadharan Springdalians ko hero bana diya. And this is not just my feeling, but I speak on behalf of every Springdalian in US and Canada. Not only did she stay connected with us while we were at school, but treated us as a family even after several years later. My most favorite moment when she came to bless me and my wife on my 25th wedding anniversary in 2015. Ma'am Kumar, Auntie Kumar, Nani Kumar, the various names of an enigmatic lady who has shaped generations with love. We are blessed that ma'am has been a part of our life. A few lines that I would like to share. A lady with charisma, a lady with a heart of gold, a lady so magnanimous, a lady we no longer can hold. A lady who meant family, a lady who gave us love. You shall be missed ma'am, there shall never be another like you. Shower your blessings on us from wherever you are because your children are lonely without you. So many memories, and there are Springdalians here today who have made the effort to come from outstation and even abroad. Thank you all for your messages. Mr. Rajiv Gujral pioneered the social and community building in the OSA, which was so close to Ma'am's heart. Her empathy and care for all, those who needed an extra boost, as she called it, may it be a student, a teacher, grands in the basti, members of all community, are lessons we all learned. Rajiv is not here today due to health condition. I request Mrs. Nidhi Agarwal to read out his message. A somber morning to all. Dr. Jyoti Bose, faculty members, trustees, and members of the old Springdalians. We, the community of Springdales, are indeed fortunate that we had an opportunity to interact with the one of the most extraordinary, exceptional, exemplary, and charismatic human beings the Creator makes them very rarely. It is really remarkable that the thousands of students and individuals whose lives she touched remember her as the one who had such a significant and positive impact in their lives. She had every positive quality possible, always smiling, vibrant, dynamic, radiant, boundless energy, forthright, fearless, crusader, compassion, especially for the underprivileged, genuine well-wisher, humanitarian, and a leading light. Anyone who met her, even for a short period, was in awe of her. 
We, the students of 60s and early 70s, were extremely fortunate as we were in Springdale's at a stage when the school was still growing. A small lawn surrounded by 20 classrooms, a 30 feet by 20 feet stage, which was the focal point of all activities. The weekly news presentations by the four houses, debates, elocutions, and even inter-school competitions and memorable pageants like the Quest of the Spirit were held there. She was the principal then, and her office was at the entrance. She could observe everything in that compact campus. She knew every child and his or her parents. It was like a family, and she nurtured it very caringly. She always taught us to stand for what was right. I remember the time when the Delhi government decided to open a liquor vend on the ridge 55 years ago. The students of Springdale's staged a protest march and the liquor vend was shut down. The new Pusa building got ready towards the end of the 60s. From the compact classrooms, we graduated to huge classrooms, science labs, the library was almost six times bigger. We were excited to get our individual lockers, which was a new experience for students at the time. She was so ahead of the times that a two-way speaker system was introduced in the classrooms. Now there are CCTVs, then the monitoring could be done through the speakers. Any class making noise in the absence of the teacher was reprimanded through the system and she could even recognize the voices of the students. So single-handedly, she ensured that proper discipline was maintained in the entire school. She believed in holistic education and right from the commencement laid special emphasis on extracurricular activities. While most other schools concentrated on knowledge from the books aimed only at exam results, thus developing only the qualities of the head, Springdaleans developed qualities of the head as well as the heart. That's what makes us unique. Many people say, with Mrs. Rajni Kumar's passing away, it is the end of an era. But in reality, a new era in education started with her. And when you leave such a strong legacy, then the era continues to flourish. My heartfelt condolences to Dr. Jyoti Bose and the family who looked after her so dedicatedly during her long illness. She will always have a special place in our hearts. Thank you. Um, sorry, announcement in the middle. There is a car 5385 desire. This is blocking the way. If it belongs to you, uh, it's a Beleno, it's a Beleno 5385. Sorry if it's anybody's, they can just. Um. Mrs. Kumar was so proud of the OSA. She always said that it was the only alumni association in the world that not only remained connected to its alma mater, but was also a pillar of strength to it. The old Springdalians were un indeed her very favorites irrespective of the grades in school. The OSA took its form in 1974 with Mr. Ajwani as president and Mr. Ajay Mehra as honorary secretary. Since then, her love, guidance, ideas, and suggestions, encouragement, and healthy criticism has guided OSA. We present to you, thank you for all your love. As an ocean is made of infinite drops, air is made of infinite particles. A legacy is created when infinite lives are transformed. Such is the legacy of Dr. Rajani Kumar, timeless. Auntie, Nani or Ma'am Kumar as she was lovingly addressed by Springdalians 
has had a strong influence on each and every life she touched during her lifetime. Not only during school life, but outside of it, each student was precious to her and she was generous with the warmth, compassion and love for everyone. Always glowing with an infectious smile, her mere glimpse was enough to lift the darkest of clouds and her words filled one with an aspiration to own the world. She was a visionary in the true sense as she transformed the scape of education and formulated an extracurriculum based system which was much ahead of its times and only recently is being recognized as a standard for the reforms being brought about in the Indian education system. She realized the potential of a strong alumni body by laying the foundation of the Old Spindelians Association as early as 1976, which has grown in strength year after year and today has over 7,000 members. She ensured that the OSA had a strong constitution and was well structured with Apex and a GC body. OSA has lived up to her expectations by engaging in numerous meaningful contributions to society. She was extremely proud of this one-of-a-kind alumni body which was better than the best. She would lovingly call it Baradri. The association has since kept the Spindalians across the globe bonded together and are keeping the motto of the school Vasudeva Kutumbakam alive. More than that, the bond between Spindalian alumni and the alma mater is alive mainly due to love for her and her love for her students. She was always there for everyone and very interested to know of one's accomplishments and achievements. She was never short of words to appreciate, motivate and encourage to reach for the stars. Whether it was a problem at work, career or home, she always had time to listen with deep empathy. It was this quality of hers which created belongingness with her. Each and every student felt like she was their own mother, auntie or nani. I am possible is what she taught. Being a perfectionist, she demanded no less of her students. She led by example and continued to motivate each one to give their best. The footprints that she has left behind will always shine like a beacon for the new generations of Spindalians to follow and keep transforming the world into a better place. Auntie Ma'am Nani, Dr. Rajni Kumar is indeed a timeless legacy. Thank you, Sanjeev, and your team for that. Through the years, there were so many families that remained connected with her. At the three-generation party, during the Diamond Jubilee year, she was at her happiest, remembering all the names and all the stories. Even today, there are so many three-generation Springdalians here to pay their homage. Dr. Pramod Kohli, batch of 1974, who started the health camp in the OSA is somebody that she really cared for. Pramod, please. A very good morning to all. Over 50 years of association, more than five decades of enriching experiences and two minutes to speak. But she would say, go on. So here I am. Our equation began like that of a student and a teacher. But very soon I realized she was much more. A mother, a friend, a confidant, a mentor. And even beyond, the relationship grew to be that of a pure faith, trust, and surrender. She stood by me through all my ups and downs. The greatest gift she gave me was the strength to believe in myself and the courage to stand by my convictions. Be it 
a small voice to question the then practice of all boys going for music and all girls going for dance way back in late 60s. Yes, she encouraged me to be the only boy in the dance class, in an all-girls dance class. Still later in 70s, she gave me the strength. She stood by me as I was the face of a protest, protest against the malpractices regarding medical entrance tests. I complained and represented against the Registrar Faculty of Medical Sciences, University of Delhi, and she was with me, guiding me. She was a pillar of strength to not only me and my family, but to all Springdalians. When stuck in the tsunami aftermath, cut off from the world, no communications, no transportation available, she was instrumental in bringing us back to the mainland. Her words were prophetic. She always said, for my daughter, her fragrance will spread wherever she goes. Her work and nature will speak for themselves. She was right. For my son, a very special son, she had always an extra hug. And she said, the world is a place, big place, and he will find his place, wherever, in his own time. Very true, very, very true. She was not only a support to me and my family, but to everyone in the Springdalian's family. I vividly remember how calming an effect she had on late Mr. Bhamkesh Banerjee. Her mere presence would ease the air hunger he had in his terminal stages, suffering from a terminal stage of bronchogenic carcinoma. Never to sit back and always active, today she assumes a bigger role, that of a guardian angel. I just need to close my eyes and there she is with her eyes wide, with her hands wide open, a smile on her face saying, come my pet, thank you. Mr. Ashwini Nanda, a part of a very favorite sports boy, is here to give his thoughts. Ashwini Nanda is of the batch of 1976. Respected Mrs. Bose, our teachers, and my fellow Springdalians, I stand here this morning I just can't help saying that I can't mourn somebody like Mrs. Kumar. Impossible. For me, she's the light. She's here. And I know I can feel her spirit somewhere here. For me, she's never, ever going to die. She's going to remain alive for the rest of my life, for the lives of all you Springdalians. So much has been spoken about her. and. Before I even start, I'm going to make a request to Mrs. Bose that, ma'am, we can formulate, we can put something in a capsule, a big capsule, a memorial that has never been seen before in this world for a teacher, for a, for a mother, for a guide. And if every student sitting here today her former students, students, everybody has a story to tell. I'm not the only one here, but if I ask everybody in person, they have a story to tell. And that story, we can all get together and put it into editions and editions of a memoir for Mrs. Kumar. That's my wish. I will discuss it with Mrs. Bose at some point, but that's my wish. But I'd like to touch upon a different aspect, a lighter side of Mrs. Kumar, and we were the beneficiaries of that light, lighter side. Uh, you know, she, one aspect of her life was that uh, 
she challenged herself to deal with the challenged kids like us, you know, who are academic, academically brilliant, to say the least. Mrs. Conver will certify that. And uh, if there was an award that could have been, uh, you know, instituted for some of us, it would have been a doctorate of a different kind, a PhD, past high school with a lot of difficulty, and we just would learn. One day, one incident, just one incident, of so many that, uh, you know, I've experienced with ma'am, was that one day, uh, you know, I was booked for something very special, and of course, a date with her in her office, and uh, the teacher in question, I won't name her, and she called me that this guy is a dud. He's daft. Because obviously my mark said it all, and it was not the fault of the teacher to call me so. But I was so amazed that Mrs. Kumar took exception to it. She said, no. One thing this guy cannot be, and he, he's not a daft. He's not a dud. He says, a sportsman has to decide in microseconds to do what he has to do. And if he doesn't have anything here, he can't be a sportsman either. So that's one remark you have to take back. Yes, he's challenged about his academics. And uh, well, uh, that's the way he's going to be. And true to her words, I lived up to all her expectations and I got 58% in my high secondary. And that was, the, and there was an absolute party. You know, that uh, this guy is finally gone. So, you know, this is one aspect of her that a lot of people must understand that besides being, you know, you know named at every forum of the academic world, she had some space for guys like us. And I'm absolutely, you know, indebted to her that from that day onwards, when she stood by me, I became a student for life. I love to learn and feel free, anybody who wants to teach me, including you, Akriti, you can teach me how to sing if you want to. <laughs> but I just like to remember her in the fondest way and that is with the way I knew her. I mean, I cannot cry. I cannot cry because there are no tears for her. And she will live forever. As everybody has said, she's timeless. For me, the word that everybody yearns to hear about somebody immortal, Mrs. Kumar is immortal. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashwani. The 80s was a time of transition, difficult for so many. The 10 plus 2 system, the introduction of the computer, a changing world, and the end of apartheid. Ma'am's guidance and foresight kept Springdale's ahead of its time. She pioneered the movement for change, and schools not only in Delhi, but all over the country followed Ma'am's methodology. We have Mr. M Navneet Malhotra, batch of 1982, who was blessed to be of assistance to her till her last, presenting his thoughts. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mrs. Bose. Good afternoon to everyone, my respected teachers, my respected seniors from Old Springer Association, my colleagues, friends, some of the, some of the young OSA students here who are like children to me. I think uh, 40 years of OSA Association today, 14 years at school, 58 years of my age, 54 years influenced by Dr. Auntie Rajini Kumar. And I think most of us out here already have a very, very big impact of Auntie Kumar's presence. In 40 years, I don't know how many events we have attended for the school, for OSA. And I think this is the first time that I'm, I'm actually attending a, a, a OSA event with, without 
Auntie Kumar actually being present among us. And as Ashwini Bhaiya rightly said, we all feel she's here somewhere. She's watching us. She's smiling the way she always used to smile. She's waiting for her chance to take the mic and talk to us. And because uh, when she spoke, nobody could wink. She was so good in talking. The smile, the fire in her belly, the way she used to move around, jumping from all the kindergarten schools to the big schools attending, trying to make and attend every event, every function. Children were her life. She always wanted to be with her students. She always wanted to be with, her, with all of us. And, and I, I think she, she's with us still. Because uh, I always used to tell her, especially in the last six months that she used to keep in and out of Medanta. I used to see how Dr. Bose, uh, I mean, how she looked after her, sacrificing her own health, how Shunali, how Appu, uh, they were all with her. I mean, and she never wanted to give up. I personally feel she never wanted to give up. I used to tell her, Auntie, char mine, only four months more, we'll hit the century. And she, she said yes. And she, she, she went away. So, we miss you. We miss you, Auntie, sorry. I told Navneet wo bhot khush kismat tha ki wo unki aakhir tak seva kar saka. Thank you Navneet from all of us. Mrs. Madhu Shekhar Swaminathan, batch of 1983, her very favorite dancer is here. She's come all the way to Delhi just to present her little memory to all of us. Madhu. Ashwini Bhaiya, you took most of my stories. I'll tell you why. While growing up, I used to ask my father, Dad, I want to see God. Who's God? So my father gave a very simple answer. He says, any human being who gives you love, who shows compassion is God. And I met Ma'am Kumar. That's what she was to me. So loving, so affectionate, so compassionate, so understanding, so accepting. I haven't met anyone else like her. Two very, very vivid memories. Um, I was in the eighth standard final terms and um, I was unapologetically miserable at maths, unabashedly failing in every term in maths. And finally, in the final term of the eighth standard, I failed with a vengeance in maths. She called me to her office. She said, child, you're a good dancer. What happens with maths? It was blasphemy that I was committing at that time. And I just said, ma'am, I hate maths. She did not, I mean, so loving was her voice. And she said, Madhu, darling, I understand that, but there's no way out of maths. You have to study maths. And I do not want you to fail, lag behind. I want you to go to the ninth, to the tenth, two more years, you study maths, and then you can say bye-bye to maths. And your name has come up through ICCR as a cultural delegate to go to Bhutan with a group of your seniors, Ritu, you remember? And I don't want you to, uh, I don't want to stop you from that. You must go showcase your talent. And because of maths, so I said, um, so what are you going to do about it? I said, um, I'll take tuitions. Tuitions was like an insult those days, but I said, I'll take tuitions. She said, do what it takes. Promise me you'll do well in maths. And two years, I studied maths. And by the end of the 10th, I was so much in love with maths that I took up maths again in the 11th standard instead of economics. First term, and um, I realized it's not maths, it's me. So <laughs> I gave up maths for good. I took up economics. And boy, two terms. I was just going nowhere. She again called me to her office and she said, what now? This is not maths, Madhu Shekhar. What is it? 
I said, ma'am, um, I can't study economics, but, but CBSC offers dance, Bharatnatyam as um, a prescribed uh, subject for studies. She looked at me, I think she was happier than me. She said, really, Madhu? I said, yes, ma, how did you know? I said, ma'am, I saw it in the library. So if I can get dance as a subject for studies, she again said, I'll try. I don't know how easy it was or difficult it was for her to fight with the CBSE to get me that subject because I was the only one doing Bharatnatyam. She said, look, I don't have a teacher for you. Mr. Sinha teaches Manipuri and you are not, you've not learned Manipuri now to start with. So I said, ma'am, I'll do it on my own. Please get me dance. So I think she fought with the CBSC, got me dance, and the rest was, it was a walk in the park. I, I, again, she said, you promise me? I said, yes, ma'am, I promise you. So ma'am, I promise you today, I shall live by the lessons of love and compassion that you so lovingly gave to us. Please keep your hand above my head and keep bailing me out of maths and economics kind of situations in life forever. Thank you so much. Mr. C. V. Srikant, batch of 1985, a student she had immense faith and care for, loved to listen to him. And every time he would come on the mic, she would very intently listen to what he had to say. CB. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Bose, all the dignitaries, my OSA friends, somebody said a while ago that we all hoped this day would not come. But we all knew that this day would come. It was just the clash of uh, what the mind and the heart wanted vis-a-vis -vis what logic and rationale says. I also see that I'm the only one without a paper. I made many sheets. I tore off many sheets. What do I write? I, 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 I couldn't pen down, I couldn't capture what I wanted to in those sheets of paper with an ink. Failings of the language are several times an impediment and Nothing brought out the depth, the emotion, and what I wanted to actually express. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to speak from my heart. We've run out of adjectives. I've heard everything one can ever hear about a human being who was larger than life. And several people have said that she was timeless. Yes, she was timeless, but there's one more thing that I wanted to just bring forth and I would believe that everybody here will agree with me. She was one person where I thought and I observed and I saw where time stood still. My association with her goes back to 1970 when I joined school. I'm told my mom went to the Karolbag local market, a chance to see this board saying Springdale's. She took me along, walked in, Mrs. Kumar was there. She said, um, I'm looking for admission for my child and Auntie Kumar said, leave him behind, he starts today. It's 52 years, Navneet Bhaiya, you're way ahead, 56, you always have been, of continuous association with the school. Time stood still, the cheer, the wink in her eye, the glint in her eye, the optimism, the positivity, the smile, the effervescence, the exuberance, never changed over 52 years. And they say, Vakt cheezon ko badal deta hai. Kaise? It didn't do it with, the, with her. She actually had time stand still. 
every moment of what I experienced with her over my 50 years of association with her was exactly in the same framework. And after I heard you, she, I think, left in the same framework. Everyone, every individual speaker, Dr. Bose, thank you very much, ma'am, for inviting me also for the memorial that we had for her some weeks ago. Every speaker, every speaker, including today, has used the word mentor for her. Can you believe what that is? Every speaker has said she was my mentor. How is that even possible? And yes, as Ashwini Bihar rightly said, she hasn't gone anywhere. Because she's left behind in us a small part of her in every individual sitting out here in this auditorium who carries her spirit, her cheer, her legacy, her value system, her ethos that we imbibed. A small part of her is in every one of us. How, can she could have, how come she could have gone away? And she, as a matter of fact, has taken a little bit of each one of us away with her. What a huge, tremendous reciprocal arrangement. Unconscious, unbelievable. She left behind something so small and so impactful and she's taken away something so, so big from each one of us. Several of us here in this room and several of the people I've met in my life, I would say they are builders. We are sustainers. You know, we build on things. We sustain things. That's why I think she was marked different. She was a creator. She created, she created value. She created value for this nation. Padma Shri Dr. Rajni Kumar, the national and international imprint that she left on this nation, on lives, thousands of lives. Albert Einstein once said, and it almost seems like she, he wrote it for her, he said, don't look to become a man of success, endeavor to become a man of value, look around and observe how people want to get more out of life than what they actually give to it. A man of value gives more than what he receives. Can you imagine anybody else who would fit into this slot? Who gave so much, so much far more than what she received in life? You know, anyone can make things complex and complicated. The human mind is programmed that way. But it takes a touch of genius. Madhu? Madhu Shekhar? To have had her take maths in 11th. Touch of genius? I was talking about her. And that's what made the difference. She made her think that she had suddenly a touch of genius in maths. Anyone can make life complex. Ma'am, I was also like that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, Ma'am, I, I, I do not want to share what we had in class. It's just too personal. Because the first day of class with Mrs. Kanwar, and I remember she had me stand up and said, C.V. Shrikant, if you think you're very intelligent, you are mistaken. I will never forget that, ma'am. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I won't take much of your time. All I want to say today is, if you ever want a rainbow, you need to start enjoying the rain. Each one of us wants to have a rainbow, but open our umbrellas to life. जब बारिश की बूंदों का हमें असर नहीं पड़ेगा और उसका हम लुत्फ नहीं ले पाएंगे, how will we enjoy the rainbow? One last instance. I was called once to her room. I'm sharing a memory. Give me 30 seconds, please. I'm sharing a memory. I was called to her room. Uh, I was usually called only for duties and things like that, but this time it was a little different. I entered and I had two teachers standing there, and she looked at me and she said, "I'm receiving complaints about you." 
On one side was Mr. Banerjee, on one side was Mr. Sinha. I didn't know what to do. I said, ma'am, sorry, what happened? He said, they both want you in the ballet and, this, and the choir. What is this? And I suddenly th thought I made a mistake by dancing well and singing well. So I didn't say anything. And she said, there's a third quarter of complaints coming from your teachers that for the ballet and the choir, you're never in class. The matter got resolved. I was eventually taken in the choir. And she said, thank you. So I left and she said, no, CV, you stay. The teachers left. And you know what she taught me that day? A lesson that has remained in life with me forever. And a lesson, I'm sorry, ma'am, today I hang my head today. I haven't really learned it very well. She said, CV, you need to learn to say no in life. It's very important. Learn to say no. It's 50 years, ma'am, and I'm still not able to say no. No, ma'am, you aren't anywhere else. You're with us forever. Thank you very much. Thank you, CV. The 80s also saw the birth of Springdale School Dhalakwa, the jewel in the crown, so ably led by Dr. Jyoti Bose, carrying the Springdalian banner to even greater heights. Mrs. Kumar's office here became a center of activity, new ideas and initiatives, and an abode for many old Springdalians. Let's do something different, she would say with a twinkle in her eye. We knew trouble lay ahead. So we pulled up our socks and got ready to follow the Pied Piper. She was principal till 1988, and we have two students of hers who were very privileged to be in that batch, Mrs. Monica Chandra Juneja and Mrs. Dipali Jha, to share their memories of that time. Dr. Bose and fellow Springdalians. There's a famous couplet that I'm sure you've all heard that goes, Khudi ko kar buland itna ki har takdeer se pehle khuda bande se khud puche ki bol teri raza kya hai. For me, no one epitomizes this more than Mrs. Kumar. Not only did she script her own destiny, and boy, what a destiny. She shaped a significant part who all of us are today, certainly who I am today. The institution that she was and the institution that she created has given me the best years of my life, the rich tapestry of school life. She gave us fun, but she taught us discipline. She gave us freedom, but she taught us responsibility. Academics was important, but ma'am gave us such a beautiful canvas to paint on Art, sports, science, song, dance. She told the boys, you must learn to sing and dance. She taught all us girls, go play on the basketball. Nothing was the preserve of the boys and nothing was the preserve of the girls. As I look back, I'm really struck by how far ahead of her times she was. The words that we speak today, diversity, inclusion, something that is a core part of my professional life today, the edifice was set the day I became a Springdalian. Her love, her warmth, the twinkle in her eye, the chuckle, the guffaw, all came with a solid determination to make us good human beings and global citizens. I think, ma'am, ours must be the only school that had awards such as those of the head and heart. We were perhaps the first ones to learn foreign languages. We were perhaps the only ones who knew of Africa's struggle for freedom, and so on and so forth. So I think we were all really privileged to be global citizens, started then, and here we are today. The dreaded cleaning duty, the jharu pocha after school, we dreaded then today. She taught us to clean our own mess, literally and figuratively. She taught us how to treat those who help us with respect. Our famous annual day was the finale culmination of countless rounds of practices. As CV said, we looked forward to, be, to being out of the class at that time, 
but it gave us life learnings. Nothing was perfect till indeed it was perfect. I remember the last annual day, 1988, in the backfield, as I was being, uh, I was preparing to read the school report with ma'am. We did countless practices. I was very nervous, public speaking, hands clammy. Um, and she said, speak confidently, stand tall, you are a Springdalian. Thank you, ma'am, and I hope we all always stand tall. It feels very surreal today to stand here now and talk of her in the past, but as so many before me have said, ma'am will always live in us and with us forever. The heavens are indeed a richer place resounding with her case, Sarah, Sarah. I have to tell you one thing, my children who passed out of DK um, and I passed out of Pusa Road, we have numerous debates and arguments about whose school is better. But in that argument, we are all winners because Springdalians we all are and will always be. So thank you, ma'am, for giving us a legacy and generations of Springdalians. I have to say one last thing. You know, Madhuji, you shared uh, how ma'am told you, talked to you about maths, but the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I had a similar question with ma'am Bose when my daughter had to come to grade 11 and I said, can you believe it? She doesn't want to take maths. And she said, so? As she said, she wants to take arts. So she said, so let her. And thank you for that guidance because today she is in the same college as ma'am Kumar was, the London School of Economics. And I am not only a proud Springdalian, I am a very proud Springdalian parent. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this chance and honor to be here today. Some people walk into your lives, they leave an influence. Some leave an impression or two. Some people walk into your life to mold you into who you are going to be for the rest of your life. It was 1st of September, 1980, my first memory of my closest interaction with Mrs. Kumar. It was here, somewhere here on these grounds, because we couldn't have recognized it now from then, and we were laying the foundation stone of Springdale's Balakwa. As she ushered in my father into the enclosures, and she put her hand on my head, a gesture that in time turned out to be much more than symbolic. A couple of years later, my father expired, and the 14-year-old me found the world crumbling all around me. I did not have to ask for it, but Mrs. Kumar gave me the tuition waiver that ensured I continue and complete my schooling at Springdale's. This and other acts of her kindness to me, to my mother, to my family, they inspired me to overcome my pain and draw from the strength. Suddenly, she became my father figure. You've heard lots of other words for her, but she was like my father figure, giving me strength, giving me courage to face the world, to face the obstacles that would lie ahead. I learned a lot of things from her, from, from her grit, from her grace, but the one value that she left deep inside somewhere was the value to give back. Give back whatever we can, in whatever measure we are able to. Five years ago, and ma'am, both you will relate to this, it's a little funny incident. She wanted to share a clipping of that 1980 magazine where the news article had been published about Springdale's Talakwa. And she asked Ms. Atri for my contacts. And Ms. Atri called me and said, Dipali, please give me an ID which has your name as Dipali Jha because she won't take a Dipali Verma at all. <laughs> so when the news came last month, the first reaction I had was, the light has gone out of our lives. But I would like to amend it. Maybe somewhat like Pandit Nehru amended his own. This quotation was his when Gandhi passed away. And he amended it, and I will amend it today and say, Mrs. Kumar, ma'am, you were a reservoir of light. 
you have left behind so much of it. It's going to last us forever, for all of us and for Springdales. We'll miss you. Thank you so much. I can understand Dipali where that is coming from. She could never stop calling me Ritu Sethi. It took many years for her to understand that I was now Ritu Varma. But then that was the beauty of it, ma'am. Music was closest to her heart, and those, thus no surprise that Mr. Sushmit Bose, Shantanu Moitra, Akriti Kakar, among many, many others, including the whole choir that you saw up on stage, were always very special to her. Shantanu and Akriti are here today to be a part of this memorial. Thank you, and stage is yours. Yes, stand here with the guitar, with Mrs. Kumar not bring this. Uh, so I, I quite agree with many of our speakers that we need to celebrate this lady. She was incredible. The only sad part is that I thought she did incredible things for me. Sitting here, I realized she did incredible things for everybody. And that was her speciality. I'll quickly recount this amazing thing. Remember, the school had a, Pusa Road had a speaker in the classroom. Uh, so two kinds of students were called. Yeah, you know. So every, <laughs> every other day, my name would be announced. And I would be standing outside Mrs. Kumar's uh, office, either for doing something which is not right, or for any cultural activity. So over the years, I've realized she kind of specialized in this dealing with students who didn't fit anywhere. Uh, who were a little crazy, you know, mad, prone to failures. So my mother was very upset that her two days mein isko bhej dete hain kisi school competition mein padhai kaun karega my mother didn't know that even if i studied nothing would have happened <laughs> so she uh, one day went and met mrs kumar and uh, the conversation was like this that uh, mrs kumar said yes uh, mrs moitra she said that uh, you know every other day my child is going for this competition that competition how will he study? What will it happen? Music has no future. And this was those times. So uh, what's happening? So Mrs. Kumar had a twinkle in her eye and she said, uh, uh, it'll work out. Uh, he, he'll be okay. We'll not send him to so many competitions, but I think you will be proud of him. Many, many years later, uh, I scored a film called Three Idiots and um, I got a national award. So I was sitting in the Vigyan Bhavan and there was, it's, a, it's a very regal kind of affair and the president was there and suddenly one usher, like a person who shows the seats came and said, your school principal is here. And my heart sank, what did I do now? And uh, so I couldn't, I, I saw her from far, she was on a wheelchair, but uh, because there's a whole protocol business which happens. So I took the award and I got down and the first person I met, she was there. And my first question to her was, what are you doing here? And like many of the stories we've heard, she found out that I was getting an award and she made it a point to be there that day on that national award day. And she told me with a twinkle in her eyes, is your mother here? <laughs> so I said, uh, yes ma'am, she's here. Can you please call her? <laughs> so my mother, obviously there's no recollection of this. My mother came and, and this is the genius of Mrs. Kumar. 
She just looked at her and said, I told you so. <laughs> uh, the song for which I got the National Award is almost, in many ways, when I was composing the song, the words and the lyrics almost, I don't know, it's a, it's a crazy coincidence, but it almost seemed it was a, it's what I remember of her. And when you hear the lyrics, you'll know it's as, as if it was written for her. Baiti hawa sa tha wo Chhuke hamare dil ko Kaha gaya usse dhoondo Hum ko to rahi thi chala thi Wo khud apni raah bana tha Girta sambhalta Masti me chalta tha wo को कल की फिक्र सताती वो बस आज का जश्न मनाता हर लम्हे को खुल के जीता था वो बदलवारा था वो यार हमारा था वो कहाँ गया से ढूंढो कितनी धूप में छाव में जैसा रेगिस्तान के गांव में जैसा उल्टी धारा तीर के तैरता था वो हम बहते थे रहते कुएं में वो नदियां में गोते लगाता यार हमारा था वो कहाँ गया उसे ढूँढो She's with all of us. That's why we don't research. Thank you so much. Akriti, come on stage. So uh, it's amazing. Uh, I met Akriti professionally in Bombay and in one of the recordings uh, she said by the way I'm a spring alien I said oh wow and then she said that apparently I'd given a pep talk to their school or their, their badge as to how you can break the mold by not just being an engineer doctor you can do other things and here is Akriti Kapkar um, before I start I'd like you to also share the drum kit story that you very inspiringly shared with me. I think that says a lot about Auntie Kumar. <laughs> very simple thing. We had a rock concert in school which is banned. Uh, as soon as he used the word rock concert, it was banned. So, uh, <laughs> so um, all, everybody said that you can't have such loud music and all that. So I went to Mrs. Kumar and saying, Mrs. Kumar, uh, what do I do? So this is, this is the lady. She said, you know, think of an idea. If you want to do something, you have to figure out a way to do it. Then she planted a thought. If this concert is for charity, I think we can do this. <laughs> so uh, I think Sanjeev Vadwa is here. Sanjeev Vadwa, oh, by the way, amazing AB bro. You and your team, fantastic. A big round for Sanjeev and his team. <laughs> Superb. So uh, we went on stage and uh, I so many stories. Um, Ma'am, where do we rehearse? Uh, Nobody is allowing us a room. They're saying uh, we can't do it in school hours. So she's saying that so you can't do in school hours. What are you doing after school hours? <laughs> so chemistry lab was opened up and we did rehearsals, rock concert happened. She came, Joe was there, Sushmit was there, Jing Bang, Fineries, this, this. It is just incredible what all she facilitated. Uh, annual day, standing there, five hours, physics, chemistry, maths, biology, 
Every possible award has happened. There is no award for music. So she looks at me and she says that, uh, Shantanu, you're looking a little down. I said, ma'am, every category has an award. There's no award for music. She said, just do what you love. Things will work out. And this is, this is that God that somebody mentioned. And next year, I see the first Sunil Bose Memorial Award for music happen. She made it happen. She facilitated it. She was constantly playing Katputli, and that is why we remember her. Mm -hmm. The drum story is, is basically, we, for the rock concert, we bought a drum kit. And next day, we were sitting in the class, I can hear pieces the back, back, uh, back here, uh, back field me. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> I'm thinking, where is the sound coming from? So Mr. Kapoor has used that to, for, to do the PT. I panicked. I went to Mrs. Kumar and said, ma'am, my drum kit has gone to the PT, uh, Mr. Kapoor. He said, go and talk to him nicely and tell him that uh, after the concert, you can gift it to the PT department to do that. Tell that if you can use it. She was always bailing me out. As always, um, is stage par agar pata nahi kyun heartbeat bad jati hai. I'm probably still not wearing school uniform, but it feels like I'm back on the same stage. And uh, I think being on stage, I didn't know I'm going to be on so many other stages across the globe. Springdale's Auntie Kumar, the power that she instilled in all of us. It was like an injection we didn't know we needed. <laughs> and um, though I couldn't be in school in the time that she was in school, in the premises, but I did have the good fortune of meeting her multiple times and seeking her blessings, be it uh, events at school or otherwise. And even when I went to Mumbai right after school, she kept asking me every time I met her, did you do, did you do college finally? Are you a are you graduate now? So I, I assured her, yes, because her concern was, you're so good at studies, I don't want you to leave studies and then only pursue music. Because she and my father both incidentally said the same thing. A doctor or an engineer can always be a singer, but a singer eventually later in life can never become a doctor or an engineer. So figure out, secure both those things. And I said, hmm, okay. And uh, also I think I'd like to thank my mother for not putting me in Bal Bharti because she was a music teacher there. She said, no, no, school mein teacher hu mein, wahan pe mere bachche nahi padenge. Because if I went to school, I wouldn't be here today. I would not have had the time that I've spent with Auntie Kumar and all the other teachers who've had a um, you know, major part of her teaching everybody down the line, all the new teachers, the old teachers, to tell your students to just fly, not think about anything that could hold them down. Of course, there are going to be challenges in everything that we may want to do. But um, she just... She just told us to be, you know, believe in our dreams. And I've seen, I think, I don't know how many of us have performed in some countries. In the small, small, small corners of the world, I've always met some Springdalian. And the best part is they're doing so well for themselves. I think it's all because of her. The seed that she planted has flourished into this big, beautiful tree that spread its branches all over the world. And we're all forever going to be so proud to call ourselves Springdalians. That's a beautiful thought, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do this together. Uh, yes. We'll sing Pal. She will sing Pal. Okay, so this is a beautiful song which is also timeless. Everybody should know it. Lyrics are mine, but you can also Google it on your phones if you don't know it. This one's called Pal. Hum rahe ya na rahe kal Kal yaad aayenge ye pal Pal ye hai pyaar ke pal चल आ मेरे संग चल चल सोचे क्या छोटी 
से है जिंदगी कल मिल जाए तो होगी खुश नसीबी हम रहे या ना रहे याद आएंगे ये पल Will you all sing with me? Yes. हम रहे या ना रहे याद आएंगे आने वाली सुबह जाने सुहानी मेरी चाहत को रख लेना जैसे कोई निशानी हम रहे या ना रहे याद आएंगे ये पल हम रहे आना रहे याद आएंगे ये पल थैंक यू थैंक यू thank you akriti and thank you shantanu she was so proud of you when you came for the diamond jubilee year and sang she told everybody how you were her students and the stories she shared with them about you in school thank you the 19s was a glorious year as ma'am enjoyed seeing their young ones bloom her dream to start a springdales at jaipur came true here at dholakwa a whole new generation had come among those dr bhavna barmi the daughter of our teacher mrs kusum varma and mr ajay dadwal are here to share their memories padmashri dr rajni kumar or nani kumar as i fondly remember her has left an indelible mark on my life and the lives of all the people that she engaged in she was a true pioneer and made significant contributions to reform india's education system along with creating springdales as an institution i was born into the springdales family as my mother kusum varma taught english at pusa road where nani kumar was the principal in fact both my children are springdalian alumni and we are a proud three generation springdales family my most precious memories of nani kumar are her all encompassing hugs whenever i was in need of a nurturing presence i could always turn to nani kumar for a hug and magically everything would be all right and i would have the strength to take on anything life throws at me she inspired and mentored even me like a lot of us said to follow my passion for psychology post standard 12 there was a choice economics at st stephens and psychology at lsr and including my dad and a lot of the world everybody said of course you should go into st stephens and psychology was unheard of but then i recall the words of nani kumar and mam bos please follow your heart and choose your career in fact i'm indebted to nani kumar and mam bos for who i am today thank you ma'am then came that hug from her once again as i joined my passion of psychology filled with affection and wisdom to follow my heart nani kumar made me an integral part of osa inviting me to be the joint secretary when my daughter meher was born her first birthday was nearing and nani kumar 
became the fairy great grandmother of Meher as she and Mambos decided to gift Meher her first birthday dress. And that was the dress that Sonali had worn on her one of the birthdays. The dress still hangs on on the same hanger, ma'am, in Meher's wardrobe. Maybe to be given to Meher's daughter, who becomes a doctor in this year, with the blessings of Nani Kumar. My most special hug was on my 40th birthday, exactly 10 years ago, 10 years one day ago, where I witnessed her indomitable energy, a full day at the school fete, and I'm sure all of us know the umpteen number of not hundreds, but thousands of students who come and take her greetings and blessings. After a full day at the school fete, followed by her presence at my birthday celebrations, where she enthusiastically danced and sang her favorite song that we all know of. The hug that came when I lost my mother was the hug that supported me from falling apart. And the Kusum Varma Memorial was created and started under her wings in memory of maybe one of her favorite teachers, my mother. May the memory of her warm hugs, which have been so all-encompassing, live forever in the minds of all the people whose lives she touched. Let's not mourn her as we say she is a timeless legacy. Let's celebrate her life and spread the joy and positivity that she is known for. I miss you from my heart, Nani Kumar. Just as I see here, the madness of daring is the wisdom of life. Friends, who doesn't remember the morning assembly as she stood on the podium with a bright smile, her feet tapping on the floor and the lovely choir songs that we learned in school? That was magical to every young life watching and imbibing from her how to start a new day with that delightful enthusiasm and energy the most favorite person to so many of us. She was and is iconic and legendary. An apt epitaph, she was unstoppable. Served with that heart full of passion and desire to change the life of the community for better. Just as my uh, OSA member, my batchmate, Hema Kapoor puts in, May Ma'am, who shaped so many minds and souls, continue to inhabit this world through us and we carry forth her principles and teachings to everyone around us. The rock star of Osa, Amitabh Rao, says, she will always live in our hearts, 99 not out. Today, I say it with pride that yes, if we are Springdalian, if you are a Springdalian, you're stamped extraordinary. We are leaders in whatever we do. We stood out because of the multifaceted grooming that happened to chisel us professionally, socially, and giving back and caring for the community. And that's because of you, ma'am. I now relate an incident of taking Bam Kumar with us to Bangalore to form the Bangalore chapter. So it's not here that when she entered the room that everybody wanted to uh, greet her, hug her, make her your presence present to her, but it happened at the Delhi airport. The moment we took ma'am inside the Delhi airport, everybody around, someone from far uh, coming, comes running and saying, ma'am, I've just landed from Japan and transiting to Hyderabad, and I was your student. Somewhere from the far, again, there were shouts that, you know, I'm your student. A jet airways pilot came up and said, ma'am, I, I am a Springdalian, and whispered to me, can I get her an upgrade? To which ma'am heard and said, no, I don't want an upgrade. I'm going to travel with my students. And that is how it she was. She never wanted favors. Sitting next, I was very lucky to have four air, aircraft rides with her together on the next seat. In the flight, she started making bread and butter and buns. We thought it is for her. She started passing on to us. We said, no, 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 ma'am, we'll make it. 
will make it for you. She said, no, a mother can always feed her children. And that is how she was. On disembarking the plane at the Bangalore airport, Huna is sitting here. So on disembarking the plane, she, she said that I want to use the restroom. I thought the wheelchair, the age, I shouted and started, oh, ma'am has to go to the restroom. She said, don't shout. It's not that, that I want to freshen up. I want to touch up my makeup. Because it's Partha Sarthi, it's Margaret, it's Dhriti, it's other students that I'm going to meet in Bangalore. So I need to look good. That was ma'am. The next day, we had a lunch at the Leela Palace Hotel, uh, Bangalore. A lavish lunch where we called a lot of Springdalians, a lot of ma'am's friends, lots of ma'am's associates, and a lot of people. And some of us uh, decided to dutch the bill together. And when we called for the bill, the culinary head of the Leela Palace, Bangalore, came up and stood in front of us and said, I am here because of ma'am. There cannot be a bill for this table ever. Because he was the son of a Himachali cook that, ma that served ma'am for many years, and we came to know about it. Yes. So I feel that, you know, uh, and she was definitely an exemplary life dedicated to making the extraordinary come alive in ordinary lives. To conclude, I pick up a line of a fellow friend, Gaurav Mahajan of my class, and his father and my father used to come together on a scooter to drop us to the West Patel Nagar School. Today, Gaurav is the ex-president of uh, Raymond's India. He studied with me together at the National Institute of Fashion Technology, Delhi. And now he is the CEO Lifestyle Landmark Group at, the, at Dubai. He flew into Bombay to specially meet Ma'am when we took Ma'am to, for the OSA chapter in Bombay. And I completely sync with what he says. We can't say a RIP to you, Ma'am, because there's no chance you are going to rest in peace. You will definitely be rocking the afterlife, making the heaven even a better place. Thank you. The millennium brought new challenges. When the EWS scheme was introduced, Ma'am said, haven't we already been doing this since 1976? The education department has probably picked up the cue from spring days itself. The millennium students who learned the lessons of life outside the classroom from her, Mr. Aparajita Bose, Mrs. Jahanara Raza, and Ms. Sonika Ajwani are he here to share their memories. Mr. Porajita Bose, you are the senior most in this group. Okay. This was about a decade or so ago. It was 2010, and I just uh, left school. And I was extremely confused between two undergraduate colleges, and there was a lot of noise in my head. And I was like, if there are two people I'd like to speak to, it would be Mrs. Bose and Auntie Kumar. And something they said to me has stayed with me till today. If your heart wills it, it is right. And that's how a lot of us remember her, right? Authentic, magnanimous, inspirational, with a heart of gold and a mind with intellect unparalleled. Thousands of us have been molded by her as everybody's spoken about it today. Um, I know she's listening to all of us, so I want to pass on a message, especially from my batch, a lot of us are here. Thank you, ma'am, for making us humans in the truest sense. We hope to carry on your message. If possible, continue a legacy that was given to us. And for the rest of our lives, we will feel your presence and unfortunately, your absence. Good afternoon. I stand here as one of the thousand students whose lives Auntie Kumar touched in such a meaningful way. 
but I also stand here on behalf of, as she described, one of her dear students, another son, a rock, and a prized confidant, my father, Sriniranjana Chwani. Their memories of Patel Nagar, starting from there, uh, their common passion for education and their immense love for Springdales and the Springdalian family made for such a strong bond between them. The equation was one of the most cherished ones by my father and by extension, the rest of his family. It was his connect with auntie that kept him so deeply attached to the school that together they set up this very association that brings us back here today. She will always remain the heart and soul of the school for us. And like someone said, it's, it's awkward not having her in the audience today and not addressing her. But like Jaha said, that she's always here with us. We feel her presence. She is no doubt the most joyful memory of every Springdalian student the real and ultimate Pied Piper. Through, Spr through Springdale, she made each one of us a, sm a small part of her grand legacy, and we are so thankful for that. It's upon us to carry that legacy forward and make sure the future generations know what she was all about, what the school is all about. She was the common thread that ran across generations. Everyone knew her, whoever passed out of the school connected with her had a personal story. So it's our responsibility that we pass on this legacy to the future generations and they understand the sensation that was Dr. Rajni Kumar. Thank you. As a young child, my earliest memory and understanding of OSA was Mrs. Kumar always in the presence of a student of hers. Hi, Prashant. Uh, these students would be at home, and um, there would always be some tea and snacks, and there was a lot of animated discussion happening about what we can do in society, what uh, what actions can the Springdalians do? And of course, then Mr. Ajwani was there, who 50 years ago, this is the 50th year of OSA. Uh, this is how the journey of OSA began. Um, I've come to realize that uh, I came into the picture much later as a grandson. And prior to me, there was a uh, connection that she had with so many of her students. I'd like to narrate a little story I remember since I was small. I remember it was the school carnival. I don't remember Dholakwa or Pusa Road. There was a, could be Pusa, Chota, it was really small. And there was um, uh, an alumni in Osa bringing his mother to to the fate and suddenly he saw Mrs. Kumar and he ran to Mrs. Kumar and he left his mother and she needed support walking. And um, I remember Mrs. Kumar saying, don't do this, please bring her here. And they sat together. Her kindness was unlike anything else. One should not forget the importance of Usa in the life of Mrs. Kumar. Usa was and is a unit, an extension of her philosophy of social outreach and being involved in society. Um, we are not an alumni like others where we meet once a year, have a dinner. Uh, Usa continues to be involved in the health camp, face-to-face, -face, living is giving programs. And she believed wherever there was distress, a Springdalian would be involved in helping. I believe it is now our duty to carry forth her legacy and her commitment towards society. At 1.19 a.m. on the 10th of November, an era ended. And at 1.19, 
a.m. on the 10th of November, a new era began, one in which her students take forth her actions and her vision and her philosophy. I would like to show you a video now of Dr. Kumar. It's a message that she recorded for the Hope concert, which was an online concert by the alumni as a tribute to Dilpreet and everyone we lost from the Springdalian community. So Mr. Wadwa, please, may I have the film? My dear members of the Springdalian family, warm greetings to all of you. I'm so happy to have this opportunity to say a few words about the situation which we are facing today with the onslaught of this terrible coronavirus. So many of you in your families have experienced suffering, illness, death of loved ones. It has been a very, very difficult and hard time through which we have been passing. But my dear Springdalians, we must never give up hope. We must never think that the road ahead is going to be worse, but how together we can make it better. I know that many of you have been doing wonderful work through this COVID period. You have been frontline workers. You have been working in hospitals been working to help people overcome their problems. And I always know in my heart that whenever there is a crisis, our Springdalians will be there in the forefront to help in whatever manner they can. It's a beautiful idea to, to have today a concert which is dedicated to the spirit of hope. Can there be anything better than to have hope in our hearts? Do we get depressed? Do we get overcome? What about the song we used to sing? It's bring the end. We shall overcome. I think that used to be almost our anthem. Whenever something happened in the world, whether a famine or an epidemic or whatever, we used to be at the forefront, singing our songs of hope to make people manage to get out of their sorrows and to fight, and to fight for the good things of life, for a better world ahead. And I am sure that we are going to overcome this also. I know there is really a lot of sorrow in everybody's home and it's difficult to cope with grief but that is something I think that we have to learn if we have not learned already and to go ahead and do whatever we can to help. Let us try to heal each other, let us care, let us share my gratitude to all of you for all that you have been doing and this terrible period of time through which we are passing. And I am sure that the time will come when a better future, a better world will emerge. My good wishes to all of you, my dear Springdalian family. Words fail me. I don't speak after ma'am has said the final word. So I will let the music speak for itself. The Osa choir. Uh, we have been singing this song forever. Yeah. But today these words mean something else. So I hope you'll all join in. We've all sung these uh, songs uh, in school, so I presume, though we have our, uh, uh, you know, the, the words here, but uh, most of us will, uh, we know these songs, so my humble request to everyone to join in.
opportunity to thank all of you for being here. I think it's been a very, very heartful assembly, memorial, a celebration, a condolence, intertwined memories, happiness, and everything. I want to, in particular, thank the organizers and have a great hand for Sanjeev Wadhava, who's done all the creatives and his team, to Ritu Varma, 
to Ajay, who I was meeting in school, and many more who are involved with this uh, very nice thing. Of course, as everyone said, it's the only one missing is Rajini Kumar, who would have loved it and taken the mic and then, you know, had a big three cheers and for spring days. So I don't know whether you've noticed, I've, we've named, renamed this auditorium. I hope you saw it on the outside. It's called the Rajni Kumar Hall of Celebration and uh, Hall of Peace and Friendship. Have a look as you go outside because this was very much her auditorium. It's the one that she loved to come to and I thought we must rename it. The granite will be ready very shortly. In the meantime, we have put the title. So while we stand here carrying the legacy forward as we must and promising to smile, which I'm not a smiler, unfortunately, but all there in my heart, surely. So let's take OSA forward in a big way. Let's think of things that are happening these days in context of the changing world and climate change, perhaps. We'll change whatever we can within the structure so that the societies of today and the committees suit, perhaps, the future that lies ahead. We look forward to restructuring OSA and having the love and the care that all of you have given, including ourselves, I'm perhaps, I think Arvind here, Arvind and me are one of the first Springdalians of the batches here. Thank you very much. And I just want to leave you here with uh, something that I just suddenly thought of. Where is it? I don't know where this thing is. Yeah, I don't know where I put it also. Okay. It just says, it's sonnet number 71 by Shakespeare. I just looked it up. No longer mourn for me when I am dead. Then you shall hear the surly, sullen bell give warning to the world that I am fled. From this vile world with vilest worms to dwell. No. If you read this line, remember not the hand that writ it, for I love you so. So that's how we must end this, that no mourning, but a celebration and the living of her legacy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a memorable occasion for a memorable soul. Thank you for gracing the occasion and sharing your thoughts with us, with your presence. Please do not forget to pen your thoughts in the Remembrance Book outside. We will now disperse in the same gracious and elegant manner that we have been taught by none other than Mrs. Kumar. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>